Hello, and welcome to this episode of Online Store Success. This is my first for 2024, and I'm coming to you a week earlier than planned because, as we know, sometimes well-laid plans never work out the way we think they're going to. So I actually broke my leg two days before Christmas, my first Saturday off from working for the year, took my dog for a walk to the dog park, took her off her lead and was having a great time. She was chasing another dog and being chased by another dog and managed to crash right into my knee and uh, broke it on impact. So I am at home uh, alone while the rest of my kids and my uh, family are enjoying the uh, summer vacation that I'm supposed to be on with them. Um, but I guess silver linings is that I get to come to you one week earlier than planned and catching up on some work and spending some time with my husband without kids for the first time in probably 17 years. So that's been fun. He's been a great nurse as well. So um, so welcome back to the Online Store Success Podcast. Happy New Year. I hope you've had a great time. I hope you haven't had a literal break like I have um, and you've had some time off your business. So today I wanted to chat with you about my five Facebook ad predictions for 2024. I know for a lot of people, the past few years, it's been pretty bumpy when it comes to Facebook ads and Instagram ads. All of the different iOS changes, uh, all of the different settings, the platform changes every other week, this push towards different automations and AI and things like that. It's been a real learning curve for uh, business owners that advertise on the platform. But I think it's actually, we've, we've sort of turned a corner and if anything, things have gotten a lot easier and people are starting to see a lot more stable costs when it comes to advertising on the platform. So I think we're in a really good place. A, a year or two ago, everyone was freaking out saying Facebook ads are dead and buried, like it's never going to work because we can't track anyone anymore. And I think it's been really great in the way that Meta has combated that. And I'm going to touch a little bit on the ways that I believe they've done that and made it easier and still affordable for us to advertise on the platform. So side note, if you want to learn even more about Facebook ads, I actually have a really cool online live training program coming up in mid-Feb. It's totally free. It's four days of consecutive online training where I'm going to share with you what's working right now, what's not working right now, and how you can succeed in managing your ads yourself in a really easy way in 2024. So if you would like to sign up for that, and like I said, it's totally free. Spaces are limited though. Be sure to check out the show notes. They'll be somewhere here and grab your spot. We have a pop-up Facebook group and then we kick off can't remember. I think it's the 13th of Feb. So I've left it. I've done it deliberately so that we've got a chance for those with school age kids to get them back in and settle to school. And we have one week of breathing space and then come on, come on over and join me in the training. All right. So let me share with you my top five predictions for Facebook and Instagram ads or meta ads for 2024. Number one, more online automation, more on platform automation. So inside of Meta or Ads Manager, you will probably have noticed this push to use things like the Advantage uh, campaign shopping type campaigns where it's it's asking you to automate everything. It's asking you to just go broad with everything. Um, it's asking you for it to even, you know, suggesting uh, text and copy and things like that. I think we're going to see more and more of that. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing as long as we still have the option to override it in certain places. The good parts of it is obviously it makes it a lot easier for business owners to create their own ads. It makes the whole process easier, which is great. The most complicated part of our ads now will be figuring out how to read and troubleshoot the results and learning on what we need to do next. If something's not working, what is it, what are our next steps to try and improve that? And also just understanding the the landscape, how the landscape has changed when it comes to, th to things like t uh, audience targeting and things like that. So we need to um, embrace some more of the automation, but also know 
where it's important for us to override it with manual settings. And also we're going to have to really, really focus on figuring out what the next steps are, because great, we can, if we can almost set up and create an ad in, in a few clicks, that's great. But how do we then know whether it's working? How do we troubleshoot the results if it's not? So that's what the focus will be on. So I'm going, we're going to see more and more on-platform automation or AI. Number two, we're going to see, I believe, and no, this is really controversial, the continued demise of complex funnels. So the demise of complex funnels, these granular audiences, these custom audiences, all of these layers of retargeting, I think that we are going to see less and less of that, even though right now a lot of gurus, a lot of agencies are, share, are still sort of preaching that this is the way forward. And I can tell you, it's really not. <laughs> I am in a number of Facebook ad accounts and I don't ever see retargeting. It's probably 0.1% of the time do I see retargeting campaigns actually work anymore. And even the same can go with interest-based audiences, lookalike audiences, really granular audiences. They just don't seem to pack the punch that they used to. And what you will often see is that those kind of audiences where people are, you know, targeting Layers and layers and layers of different interests might work well for a week and then they crash and burn and they stop working because their audience size is generally too small um, and the algorithm, the, the machine learning can't find more of those people. So even though I've been saying this for a long time, probably for about two years, most a lot of people aren't. Uh, I think people will start to learn that. And if agencies are paying attention, looking inside of their their clients' accounts and see oh, all of those retargeting, these middle of funnel and bottle of bottom of funnel campaigns just aren't really doing what they're supposed to. And often the cost per sale, the cost per result in those retargeting campaigns is higher than it is for those top of funnel campaigns, those cold, more broad, more bigger audiences. So I think we'll start to see a shift, hopefully in the narrative, around not having to go so granular with our audiences and trying, you know, a 1% lookalike versus a 3% lookalike and excluding seven day views or 14 day views and things like that. So I'm hoping those other folks start to catch up and start to really pay attention to the numbers and what's actually happening inside of the account because like, you, you know, like I've been saying, um, those detailed complex funnels just don't do what they used to. Number three, and this is really important, we need to drill down on this even more so now. We need to be making sure that it's less about us in our marketing and more about them, our customers in our marketing. And this can be said not just for meta ads, but for any of our marketing, because the brands that get the most success with their ads are those that are positioning their customer at the center of everything. Not only their campaigns, their marketing, but delivering great products, great customer service, great follow-up. This has always been true, but I think it's even more important in 2024 where customers have access to countless other options at the click of a button. If you aren't putting them front and center, one of your competitors probably is. So some, some tips here when going to think about your marketing campaigns, and this can be from a Facebook ad down to writing a product description on your e-commerce product pages, is thinking about the so what formula. If a customer sees your ad or your copy or your marketing, are they going to look at it and go, so what? Are your marketing campaigns really talking to them? Is it telling people why they should be buying from you, how you solve their problems and why they should be interested? Because more often than not, you know, we're all, we're all privy to thousands of advertisements in, in a given week. It's the so what factor. If you can cut through that and they're like, oh, this is, they're talking directly to me. This, this feels like this product was for me. Those brands are the ones that are going to win. So in order to figure this out, whether or not you are crossing out that so what factor and really, you know, coming to your customer and cutting through and talking to them and, and reassuring them that you are the right people for them. Think about this, the why. Why is it important for your customer? to buy your product. The why you, why should they be buying it from you versus somebody else down the road? The how, how is their, your product actually going to improve their day, their life, whatever it might be, 
for your customers. They don't really care the fact that it might be have 25 zippers or uh, is being handmade and hand printed and made from recycled bottles or whatever. It's the, it's the how it's going to improve them, their day, their life for your customers. So even if you are sustainable, great, and all those different things, it's 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 positioning that as to why that's beneficial to your customer. Now, we also need to think about the why now. We need to create some sort of urgency and scarcity. Why should they be buying immediately versus putting it off for six months? So when we're looking at that so what formula, we need to make sure that we are clearly articulating the why, why, why should they buy this thing from you, the why they should buy it from us, our business and brand and not somebody else, the how, how will this product or your service change the life of your customer, what sort of transformation does it uh, give them, and the why now, why should they do it now? So aside from that so what formula that, you know, are making sure that we've got that covered, we need to make sure that our current customers are happy. There's no point running ads or doing any marketing of any kind. If you have a customer service crisis happening, and I've seen this a couple of times just recently, if you're on TikTok uh, and seeing the same uh, videos that I am, you've probably seen some videos and hate online around White Fox, for example, where people have been waiting on orders for months and months and months, not getting them, not getting replies, and then lo and behold, they're then having more sales and something, you know, they're seeing all of these ads and this marketing and, and they're already existing customers and feeling like they've been really let down. So if you have a horde of angry customers who haven't received their orders for whatever reason, and if they're not feeling like they're getting clear communication as to why, running ads is like adding petrol to the fire. And I've seen this firsthand. What happens is your ads and you're, you know, you're, you're slaving over building these beautiful ads and talking to all of those points and coming and, and, and hitting any of those objections, There's, you know, the, answering the so what factor doesn't matter. None of that will matter if you've got hundreds or even thousands of angry customers who ha haven't been get haven't received what they ordered they then take it online and they take it under those comment sections of your ad they leave the angry face emoji they warn off other people they say this business is a scam it's brutal and i've seen this a few times recently so just keep that in mind your ads will not succeed if you have a crisis happening over here with all of these angry people with pitchforks Fix the problems in your business. Make sure you're always putting your customer first and then come back to paid advertising to acquire new customers. Okay, number four. I believe in 2024, we are going to see business owners diversify their ad spend on different platforms. So what do I mean like by this? As social media platforms continue to automate much of those ad advertising campaigns set up processes, businesses will feel, business owners will feel more comfortable dabbling on other platforms. Generally, once you've understood the makeup of, say, a meta ad, you will then might go over to, say, TikTok and see that it's a very similar creation process with the different layers and the different settings. So I think we will see more and more brand owners take the leap and try some other platforms. And I really, really do recommend this because we just never know where we might find success. The point of difference though is knowing and understanding the type of content you're using on those different platforms because advertising on TikTok requires a different type of content to show in that ad than say on Facebook. So if there's a different platform that you're considering testing out, I would suggest you spend some time there enjoying the platform, seeing the type of content that people are sharing, taking note of the type of ads, that if it's a video, if it's a still, uh, how quickly they get, to, you know, introduce the product, different things like that. I do actually have a previous episode about TikTok uh, advertising. Um, I'll link it in the show notes as well. So you can go back and have a listen to that. So like I said, I think it's really wise to test different platforms for your business because you just never know where you might find success. But it's understanding, obviously, the setup process, which I think if once you're confident in, in say, meta ads, you'll find that you're quite confident in TikTok and Pinterest um, and, and other platforms to start testing there. But what we just need to be really, really aware of is the different type of content. So uh, Instagram story won't necessarily work on TikTok. 
um, and vice versa. So be sure to go and do your research as to the content piece first before you start dabbling. And my fifth and final prediction for 2024 is that I believe more business owners are going to take over their ads management themselves or bring it in-house to one of their staff members. Because as we've been talking about, so much of the process is becoming more and more automated. It's becoming more and more easier to manage ourselves. And a lot of people have been burnt from agencies and or they just can't afford an agency fee because agencies, you often have to sign up for a minimum of three to six months. It's often thousands of dollars a month on top of your ad spend. And that can be just out of the question for many small business owners. But there, I know is often this real fear around, well, maybe they're an expert and maybe they will know better than me um, and maybe it's just easier and my time is better spent elsewhere. I've talked about this and interviewed many people on this podcast and for many e-commerce business owners, meta ads, Facebook and Instagram ads contribute up to 80, 90% of their traffic and sales across all of their marketing channels. I know that's pretty high. You probably don't really want it to be 80, 90%, but it, you know, it's still probably the biggest chunk of where the revenue is coming into your business. So making sure that you, you know, fully how to manage that process yourself and how it works and how to read the data and how to troubleshoot it is really, really important. Even if you do later down the track, go and outsource it, understanding how it works will uh, not only mean that you can manage them yourself and save thousands a month on the on the management fees and pay that yourself or use that to, in other parts of your business or increase your ad spend. Um, but it also will mean that once you do, or if you if you do in the future, outsource it, you'll un be able to understand the metrics. I've had a number of different agency experiences, not just for meta ads, but even just organic social media. And I always have gone under that uh, sort of uh, impression or that blind faith, if you like, where I think, oh, no, I'm handing it over. These guys are experts. They have a really flashy website and a contract and they've made me all these promises and you know they're going to do a much better job than me and they'll get much better engagement and much better results and never has that actually turned out to be true what usually happens is those situations even though it feels like a huge amount of money for me and I had an experience uh, of this where it was, I was paying three thousand dollars a month plus GST for organic social media uh, management for my fashion brand and they were just doing one post a day and five stories a week and at one point I realized they hadn't posted in about five days and I messaged that I was outraged I was like I'm paying you three thousand dollars a month and you've not even posted for five days and they've sort of shrugged their shoulders and like oh our automation system just stopped working so they were just setting up these automated scheduled posts for, you know one or two weeks in advance and then just walking away they weren't commenting uh, replying to people they weren't getting me any any better engagement in, than I was getting myself. And it was just the biggest waste of money. I was locked into a contract for three months. So it was $10,000 if we include the GST for them to do that. And it was completely ordinary. Often in these agencies, you get, you get one person sell you the product and then you get handed off to a junior over here. Um, and so, yeah, I think a lot of people, if they haven't been burnt, if they maybe don't have the budget for it, or maybe just because the fact that it's all gotten so much easier, will feel like they're in a position that they can finally learn the ropes themselves and manage the ads going forward. Obviously, if that's something that you want to do, that's exactly what I help you with. I help business owners, e-commerce business owners, learn how to confidently and profitably manage their ads themselves. And I have a few different ways that I do that. And I'll, I'll add all of the notes below. Um, but yeah, they are my top five predictions for Facebook ads for 2024. To recap, more on platform automation. They're going to streamline things and make it easier and easier for us to manage those ads ourselves. Number two, the continued demise of complex funnels, much to the horror of people that uh, continue to say that you need all these really complicated funnels because then if they bamboozle, bamboozle you with these complicated funnels, then you, pay, you, you feel obliged to pay them the money to learn how to do it. And then what do you find? It doesn't work. Number three, less about us the brand owner and our products and more about them, the customer. How are we providing a transformation to their life with our product? Number four, diversification of ad spend on different platforms. I think as confidence grows in managing ads ourselves, 
brand owners will feel uh, empowered to go and test out different platforms. And I definitely recommend you do this. And number five, more owners taking uh, their ads management in-house or learning to do it themselves. If you want to learn more about DIYing your Facebook ads yourself, be sure to sign up for my challenge in February. It's totally free. Uh, I mentioned it in the intro and I would love to have you there. We start, I think, like I said, it's the 13th of February um, and places are limited. We have a pop-up Facebook group for it where we're getting to know each other over there already. So be sure to sign up for Ads Boost Bootcamp and I'll see you there. Also, if you love this podcast or any of my episodes, I'd be so, so grateful if you could leave me a review and a rating on Apple iTunes. It would mean the world to me and it also helps other people discover this podcast too. Thanks for joining me today and I'll chat to you next week.